So let us try an example of compound interest. So the question says, 25,000 is invested into a savings account. Calculate the value of the investment of the savings after five years if the interest rate are 11% compounded annually, 11% compounded monthly, 11% compounded quarterly. Now the first thing we do in a question like this is to try to write down what we're given. So we know that our principal is equals 25,000. We know this because we're told that an investment of 25,000 was made in a savings account. We know that the N, which is our number of years, is five. And we have a couple of interest. Now to answer the first question A, which is an interest of 11%, what we would need to do is to put it into the respective formula, the formula for compound interest Now, whenever you have compounded annually, you do not divide by anything. So all we just need to do is substitute our values in. And as you can see, the answer would be 42126.45. To answer the question compounded monthly, we do the exact same thing, but the only difference is that our i we divide by 12 and our n we multiply also by 12. And that's the answer for compounding monthly. And finally, we had to compound quarterly. And that would be the answer for compounding quarterly. As you can see, we divided by 4 because it is quarterly. And we also multiplied our n by 4. That's it. Whenever you have problems which has multiple deposits or withdrawal, changing interest, we normally use a timeline. A timeline can handle complicated questions. I will do an example for you to understand how we use timelines. So the question says, Tabo invests a thousand rand in a bank for 10 years. The interest rate was 6.5% compounded quarterly for the first three years. For the next five years, the interest rate was calculated at 7.2% compounded monthly. And for the remainder of the investment, the interest was 7.8% compounded semi annually. How much money would Tabo get at the end of the investment? So to answer this question, I would recommend the first thing you do is to draw a line on which we can represent our timeline. And that's what I'm going to first of all start to draw. At the beginning of any investment, we normally say that that represents T0. And at the end of any investment, it's always how long this stuff goes for. So since this is for 10 years, we would have it as T10. So every single thing that we're giving in the question needs to fall within this number line. Now the question tells us that a thousand rand was invested at the beginning. So we should have a thousand rand written down here. But now it tells you that the interest rate was 6.5 for the first three years. Meaning that till T3, which I can represent as that, the interest rate would be 6.5 percent they also tell you that for the next five years that means from t3 down to t8 the interest rate was 7.2 percent which is this one over here and finally they said for the remainder of the investment the interest rate was 7.8 which is that there now one thing i haven't actually said is that this 6.5 we're told that it was compounded quarterly. We're going to write it like that. We're told that the 7.2 was compounded monthly. So we have that. And finally, for the 7.8, it was compounded semi-annually, which I'm going to write it like this. 
Now, with all this, we can now finally answer our question. So the formula for compound interest is still the same. Now, since we want to calculate how much money Tabo will get at the end of the investment, we understand that A is what we are trying to find. Our P is a thousand rand. Now, for each and every piece of interest, it should have its own bracket. And this is what I mean. For each bracket, we see it corresponds to a part of our timeline. This one here is for the quarterly part of our timeline. This one here is for the monthly part of our timeline. And this one here is for the semi-annually part of our timeline. And we see for the quarterly, it was for three years only. That's why we have three there. This was for five years. That's why we have five there. And this was the remainder, which was two years. That's why we have two there. So all we just have to do is put this all in our calculator and get an answer. So as you can see, these are each and every one of your values and the answer would be 2,024 Rand 64 cents. And that's it. The last section we're going to talk about is called compound decay. Now, compound decay can also be called compound depreciation. Some people call it reducing balance depreciation. It works similar to compound interest, whereby the formula is the same, but instead of we having a positive, we use a negative. Let us try out an example on reducing balance so that you guys get a better understanding. The value of a piece of machinery depreciates from 10,000 to 5,000 rand in four years. What is the rate of depreciation correct to two decimal places if calculated on the reducing balance, that is compound depreciation? Now from what we see over here, we write down what we're given. We were told that something depreciates from 10,000. So it means that our principal is 10,000. We told it was depreciated from 10,000 to 5,000 so it means our A is 5,000. Also, the fact that this whole scenario occurs in four years. So our N is four years. And we were asked to find the interest, the rate of depreciation. The formula for depreciation, like we said before, is that. So all we just need to do is substitute. And this here would be our final answer. So in conclusion, we talked about three things. So we talked about the compound interest, we talked about timelines, and we talked about depreciations. Whenever you have investment, you have loans, we normally work with compound interest. An asset depreciated like your car, it loses value. We normally know that we use a depreciation formula and we can use that to calculate how far a particular item has depreciated over a period of time. We use timeline whenever we have complicated compound interest questions, whereby we have multiple interest rates, also multiple withdrawals and deposit over a certain period of time. And with this, you should have a better understanding on how to deal with financial matters. If you have any problem regarding financial maths or any questions, there are more videos on financial maths in the description below. You can check out the link. Do like and subscribe. Thank you.